This generation has seen a number of standout titles and achievements, to say nothing of the advancements made to graphics and to gameplay. However, it's also given rise to a number of trends that can be infuriating at best and outright dangerous at worst. Let's take a look at 14 terrible trends here. Betas close to release. Betas for upcoming games are a common occurrence, usually as a pre-order bonus. While back in the day they meant playing an early build of a game, they're now just an incentive to try before you buy like demos. It's especially problematic in cases of games like For Honor, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, Fallout 76, and Anthem, whose betas go live so close to release that it's hard to believe the final game could fix so many problems. Lo and behold, they didn't, at least not at launch. Loot Boxes Overwatch wasn't the first game to have RNG packs with drop rates dependent on rarity, but it certainly helped loot boxes explode in popularity. It seemed random packs were the domain of EA's FIFA Ultimate Team mode, but loot boxes were added to games like Destiny 2, Middle Earth Shadow of War, Star Wars Battlefront 2, and the list goes on. The RNG nature of both, which can be purchased with real money, is bad enough, but they tap into certain compulsions like gambling, wanting to collect everything, and so on. And despite all the controversy generated by games like Star Wars Battlefront 2, RNG packs and loot boxes are still fairly prominent. Shoehorned Looter Shooter Mechanics Loot and gear in Assassin's Creed Origins didn't seem all that bad. Assassin's Creed Odyssey dug deeper, going for the build optimization and min-maxing that governed games like Diablo. Some players denounced the grind, while others spoke out against top-tier items being purchasable with real money. From that point on, looter shooter mechanics were shoehorned into a number of other titles like Wolfenstein Youngblood and Ghost Recon Breakpoint, even if they weren't necessary. A quick note to Ubisoft, not every game needs a loot grind. Increased Grinding Speaking of increased grinding, there's something to be said about games that turn to grinding for artificially extending playtime. It's one thing to have an end game devoted to earning levels and loot while facing additional challenges, see Path of Exile and even Borderlands 3. It's another thing to grind out levels just to progress in the game's main quest or make sure that you do the right damage to foes. It's also annoying when a game's lack of content is simply padded out by excessive grinding and see Destiny 1 at launch. And who can forget Middle-Earth Shadow of War locking its true ending behind the grind-heavy Shadow Wars? Good times. Microtransactions Remember the days of $5 horse armor? That's when microtransactions were still fairly micro. Nowadays, armor sets in Destiny 2 can cost $15 each, $40 for all three classes providing that elusive best value. Skins in Gears 5 can cost $10 each. What does it say about Destiny 2 when it sells $20 character boosts nearly half the price of Shadowkeep's expansion? Or when Fallout 76 charges $18 for a white paint job on power armor? And for reference, The Witcher 3's Wild Hunt's lowest price on Steam was $12. The mobile games market is a whole other beast when it comes to microtransactions, though. Monetization Bonanza in Mobile Games Let's look at The Elder Scrolls Blades, Bethesda's true Elder Scrolls title for mobiles. Most everything has a timer that you can spend real money on, so if you want to open silver and gold chests, craft more quickly, construct buildings faster, instantly complete missions, and so on, just pay for it. Want to buy chests with gold, epic, and legendary items for real money? You can straight up buy legendary items, because why not? Keep in mind that Elder Scrolls Blades is only one example of crazy mobile monetization. Titles like Dungeon Keeper are arguably worse, making everything an excruciating task unless you pony up the cash, and it's not shy about constantly reminding you to do so. Essential Gameplay Mechanics Locked Behind Paywalls there's yet another side to microtransactions which, even if you don't consider them pay to win, are still gameplay mechanics that shouldn't be charged for. Bethesda nerfed repairing shortly before introducing repair kits in the Atom Shop for Fallout 76. While these could be occasionally found in-game, the Collectron Station, which went around collecting scrap for the player, and the Refrigerator, which extended the freshness of food, were Atom Shop exclusives. Then there was the recent Fallout First, which offers an unlimited scrap box and a survival tent with a free fast travel point along with private worlds, at least a highly pared down version of the same, all for the low, low price of $12.99 per month. Limited Time Content 
Fear of missing out, or FOMO, is a pretty commonly used tactic in today's games industry. With the introduction of limited time rewards, cosmetics, and game content, developers try to cash in on a person's fear of never seeing or experiencing something once it's gone. What if you don't get that one Fortnite skin that's part of X Season's Battle Pass? You'll never see it again. You have to get the Battle Pass and then spend time ranking up to get it. You just have to. Season Pass content like Destiny 2 Season of the Undying, where the content will be removed once the season ends, also fits into this, to say nothing of the numerous mobile games that also do the same. It's annoying and shady, but unfortunately, it works. Battle Passes Speaking of battle passes, they seemed like a neat way to earn some bonuses and content on top of the game you are earning. Despite premiering in Dota 2, battle passes are everywhere now thanks to Fortnite. Even games like Destiny 2, Ghost Recon Breakpoint, and Dauntless have gotten in on the act. Battle passes can guarantee items, for sure, but the amount of grinding required for each rank in some games, coupled with the ability to purchase ranks for real money and the fear of missing out, can make them insidious in their own right. Shoddy Ports Make no mistake, we love the Nintendo Switch, but some ports are simply atrocious on it. For every Doom, there's an Ark Survival Evolved, WWE 2K18, so on and so forth. Even games like Overwatch have suffered with invisible player models and poor performance. Don't even get us started on titles like Payday 2, which have less content on the Switch than Xbox One and PS4. Ports as a whole are met with skepticism, but those on the Nintendo Switch even more so. Games as a Service at first, games as a service seemed novel. Free post-launch content, more support and features for your favorite games, ever-evolving worlds, well, sign us up. As more AAA games waded into the space, games as a service seemed more like a vehicle to sell microtransactions more than anything else. Most of these games are also always online, so if you lose access to your account or have spotty internet, well, tough luck. Combined with FOMO, shady post-launch roadmaps, and the crunch factors behind them, games as a service titles have soured in recent times. Seasonal Content Seasonal events are nothing new in the gaming world. Titles have been celebrating like with special items and skins for ages. Seasonal events are still a thing, but now we have seasons which can run for a good three to four months, introducing their own themes, associated items, and loot read microtransactions. Some games do it right, like Path of Exile with its Challenge League, bringing heaps of new content, improvements, and changes. Other games like Destiny 2 use the seasonal mode to reskin old armor sets, buff the Eververse store, and generally drip-feed content to players to keep them hooked. Post-Launch Roadmaps Again, post-launch roadmaps used to provide this exciting feeling of free content and long-lasting support. And to be fair, a number of games like Monster Hunter World and even Destiny 2 have stuck to their roadmaps, regardless of how the overall content is received. However, some games like Anthem propped up these roadmaps to lure in potential customers, and then underdelivered at release. But don't worry, there's a roadmap, surely things will improve. Well, roadmaps can be fickle though, and there's nothing stopping a game like Anthem from removing its roadmap entirely to fall back on seasonal content. Or a game like Fallout 76, which delayed one of its major updates, Wastelanders, and announced a premium subscription service instead. Crunch. Games as a service and the ever-increasing scale of games can be attributed to the rise of crunch in many companies like, say, Epic Games with Fortnite. However, crunch has always been an issue in the industry. Rockstar Games may have courted controversy with its crunch on Red Dead Redemption 2, but in 2004, EA was under fire for its long hours and generally terrible labor practices. If nothing else, there are more companies and employees speaking out against crunch than ever before, even if titles like Anthem, Fortnite, and so on prove that it is still a rampant issue. And that about does it for this video. If you enjoyed what you watched and want to see more from Gaming Bolt, you can always hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell icon next to it. That way you will never miss any of our videos.